Hi, my name is Kent Lee and I teach computer science at Luther College. This is the sixth lesson in a series of lessons uh, where you're learning Python by example and we're building a Frogger application. In this, we're going, in this lesson we're going to build a Frog class um, so that we can have a Frog as part of our application. So we're going to go up to the search again, the spotlight search, and we're going to type in terminal to start up the terminal. Uh, you'll want to, on a Windows machine, you'll want to start up the uh, git bash shell. And we're, as usual, we're going to cd and then cd into documents and then cd into programming and then cd into Frogger. And then in the Frogger, uh, we're going to do a checkout, uh, or a git, I'm sorry, git checkout uh, dash f, and we're going to check out uh, lesson six in this case. So we're set up to do that. We've got the images and we've got the Frogger. We're going to go ahead and start up Wing now so that we can um, and open that, uh, that Frogger. So we'll go to Documents and then we'll go to Programming and then Frogger underneath that and then Frogger.py. Okay. So this is the application that we've been working on. We did a little bit the last time to, uh, to draw our river and our road. We've got those two pieces already done. Um, there's a few more things that we need to do here. So this turtle that we've got, I am going to get a screen object from that. So I'm going to say screen equals turtle.getScreen. We did this earlier in another of the lessons. That screen, it turns out, can be useful because um, I can say to the screen that I want to draw things very quickly. So tracer zero means that we're going to draw things very quickly, but we're going to have to update after we've drawn to be able to see what we've done. So for example, this river and this road now are going to draw very quickly, but after we're done, we're going to have to do a screen.update so that we can see the results of this. So once I do that, then I don't have to wait for my river and road to be drawn anymore. They just seem to be drawn instantaneously, which is exactly what we want. We don't want to sit and wait for the turtle to do its thing anymore. We want the turtle to be fast. Okay, so uh, we've now done that and we're going to do one more thing with that screen object while we've got it. Um, we're going to register a shape. So it's register underscore shape and the shape that we're going to register is from images and it's called frogger.gif in this case. So we're going to register that shape and I'm just going to run it here to make sure that everything works and we don't see a frog yet, but we're going to see it pretty soon here. So, okay, so I've got that part of it done. Now I am ready to go ahead and create a frog. Now it turns out doing that is extremely easy because a frog is going to be a turtle. So we're going to create a class frog and we're going to say that it inherits from raw turtle. I told you that this raw turtle we can create wherever we want. So we're going to say it inherits from raw turtle, raw turtle. And then we're going to do a definite, just like any other class. And we'll have a self. And um, we're going to provide the canvas to it as well when we create the raw turtle. And that's because when we do a super uh, dot init, and which we're doing because um, because it is a uh, uh, inheriting from raw turtle, we're going to pass that canvas in on that super dot init. Okay. One more thing we're going to do, we're going to do self dot shape, and um, we're going to specify that we want the shape to be uh, frogger dot gif, and um, so we're going to go to uh, images slash frogger.gif to get that image, okay, and um, and the picture of the frog, the frog's going to move up, but right now the picture of the, the frog is pointing up, but the, the turtle is pointing to the right by default. So we're going to tell this turtle that we've just created here to turn left by 90 degrees. 
Um, and then we're also going to pick up its pen. So we're going to do a self.pen up. Remember, self is the current object, and that current object in this case is a turtle. So we're going to do a self.pen up here. And then we're going to tell it to go to its starting position, and its starting position will be at 0, comma, minus 250 on the screen. Okay, so I've created a frog class, but I haven't created a frog object yet, and I'm going to do that right down here. We're going to create our first uh, frog object, and I'm going to do it right before this screen.update. So um, we'll just say frog equals frog, okay? And that's all we're going to have to do for it to be visible on the screen. So I run this. Oops, and I'm supposed to provide the canvas to that frog when I create it. So that was the, my mistake. When I run it, there it is. That is, the, that is the frog that we've got for our Frogger application. And it's just sitting there waiting to do things. OK, so take a look at the code. Um, pause it and go ahead and type in that code there. And then after you've got that done, that's the frog class. And then after you've got that done, you'll need the to create the frog object here, passing in the canvas to it. So do those two pieces, and uh, and then start it up again. Start up the video again after that. Okay, so I'm assuming you've got those things working at this point. <clears throat> so what we would like to do is we would like the frog to be able to move on the screen. So I'm going to, after this update now, I'm going to go ahead and start telling the frog how it's going to move. This is called event-driven programming. So we're going to create an event here. And the event we're going to create is a jump event. Okay, And, um, and when we uh, jump, we're going, when we respond to a jump, we're going to move the frog forward. Remember, the frog is a turtle. So we're going to move the frog forward 10 units at that time. But we also have to do a screen.update to update the screen. Now, without anything more, this is called an event handler. But we have to register this event handler so that it responds to something that we're doing. And the, what our registration is something that we call on the screen. It's called on key press. So when we do a key press on the screen, and the key press is going to call jump, and the key that we're going to press is the up key, which is the up arrow on the keyboard. So this registers the jump event handler as responding to the up key key pressed on the keyboard, and this is called event-driven programming. Now, to get this to work, there's one more line that we need to execute, and that's a screen.listen so that we need to do screen.listen. And the reason for that is because we need the screen to start listening for events. And I think I'm actually going to take this screen.update and actually move that all the way down to the bottom down here just so that we have it at the end in case there's anything else we do later. Okay, so when I run this, I have to click in the window, but as soon as I hit the up key, the the uh, frog starts responding by jumping along and it's just going to keep jumping as I press the up key. Okay, so take a look at this. Type that in and try it out to see uh, what happens there. Make sure that you can get the same behavior that I've got here. So try that out and then start it up again. Start up the video again after you've got it. OK, so if you've gotten that done, that is the end of this lesson. You're certainly welcome to play with the frog a little bit. But remember, as we move to the next lesson, anything extra that you do You'll want to save the program in a different spot because, uh, because at the next lesson, we'll be reset back to this code so that you're ready to start the next lesson.